we can get going. So welcome everyone um, to another 100 Days of No Code workshop. Uh, really excited to be joined by Austin from Landbot, uh, which is a, a, a chatbot uh, or conversational chatbot builder um, in the no code space. Um, does some very cool things and I'm actually personally about to use it um, to integrate it into my uh, beginners course. Um, so to, fee to, to collect feedback and to actually like probe uh, people's knowledge and see whether it's actually gone uh, gone in or not so um in today's session we're just gonna get a feel for what um Lambot is uh, how to get started and um then maybe open up for some questions at the end but yeah i'd love to pass it over to you austin yeah yeah thanks matt uh max uh, uh, my name is austin and i'm with Lambot. and uh, uh first of all can you guys hear me well i just want to make sure that Okay. Great, great, great. Yeah, don't want to, you know, go through <laughs> half the presentation and not be able to hear me. Nightmare. Uh, you're, uh, all clear, anyway. you're all clear. Cool. Uh, let's uh, let me share my screen actually, just to. Can you guys see my screen? All right. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. So, uh, uh, just to kind of see a raise of hand, how many of you have uh, heard of uh, Limbot already? Oh, a few. Great, 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 great. Um, okay, so for uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Limba is a, uh, we call it, we like to claim to be the most intuitive uh, no-code chatbot builder. Uh, and today I will kind of just give you a little bit of uh, background of how we started, uh, how you guys can use this for, what you guys can use this for, and then some uh, basic uh, tricks and tips uh, to get started. And uh, a little bit about me, uh, I am not a founder, uh, but I'm a product manager here at Lemba. And previously I was with uh, uh, Kluke, a uh, company, uh, a unicorn company in Asia backed by SoftBank and then Flatfile, which is a, a data import solution for SaaS. So uh, if you uh, work on a SaaS product, you probably uh, have heard of it also. And then previously I was with CodeMentor, which is a platform of, uh, people can find uh, uh, mentors to teach them how to code. Uh, so, but uh, right now I'm working on no code, which is kind of ironic. Uh, but moving on, so uh, I want to first start with uh, a little introduction about Lemba, how Lemba was born. So, uh, our founding team actually, uh, this is not their first shot at startup. Uh, our founders actually first uh, created a company called Yexer. It's a uh, WhatsApp, uh, uh, a butler that lives on WhatsApp that get whatever you want. Uh, and in, in the beginning, they will just act as chatbots, but in reality, they're actually uh, humans replying to the, to the messages. And uh, at the end, this is not a scalable business model, so it failed. Uh, they tried out another idea here called uh, Hello Umi, which is a WhatsApp chat management solution uh, and uh, when they were building this tool, they had a native uh, AI chatbot uh, solution. But the problem is this uh, chatbot based on NLP was so bad that it, it could not even capture like basic uh, user email. So uh, the product team started to uh, experiment with something that explore a better alternative at building chatbot. And that's when Lemba was born uh, in 2017. Uh, and then we did a launch on ProductCon uh, which, without relying on any existing user and the product really uh, exploded. Uh, we got 2000 upvotes. Uh, I'm pretty sure we won the, the Golden Kitty Award uh, that year uh, on ProductCon and the rest is history. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you have used a uh, chatbot solution and uh, know what chatbot is. Um, so uh, I'll just give a brief intro of how Lemba is different. So uh, a few things that we really try to explore in the beginning is that, you know, around 2016, everyone was exploring uh, Chaba. The hype was at its peak. Uh, you have people uh, promising like uh, AI solution, uh, natural language processing. Um, but the reality is that uh, the technology was just not there yet. Uh, it has expanded a lot in recent years, but uh, at the end of the day, it's not really usable just yet, uh, especially a few years back. 
Uh, also, if you are not a Fortune 500 company, you probably don't have the skill and uh, resource to, to build a, a AI chatbot solution. And, and to be honest, like most of the time you don't really need it. Um, so the NLP, the, the, uh, the AI approach was really not accessible to most of the people. Uh, that's why we try to explore a, a no code and rule based approach. Uh, and it's not just like a linear approach because conversation is, can take a lot of different terms. So we really create this uh, no code visual builder that allow anyone to build a conversation flow easily. Um, and another uh, problem we we identify is that in Chaba, a lot of time it's only text and sometimes you see a few buttons here and there. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of conversation, a lot of inputs you try to get from users uh, is, uh, is better captured with other formats. Uh, like, uh, you know, you see the scale here, you see button, you see date input. Uh, that's why we try to integrate these wish UI elements into Lamba. So it's more than just a, 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 a like text-based uh, because a lot of times a chatbot don't really understand what you say and it's more uh, easy to capture information this way. Uh, and then another problem we also identify is that in a traditional chatbot solution, um, most of the uh, chatbot is a little corner widget, uh, as you see here on the, the top uh, left corner, this one. Um, but we thought that it's always competing with uh, other website content for user uh, attention. So we explore actually a full page chatbot and that converted super well. Uh, that's why our name was uh, is called Lembot. Uh, like it's, it's uh, it stands for landing page bot. Um, so it's a lot of people use it as a alternative to a regular landing page. But then later on, we also explore other formats like a, a pop up or like a in, inline embed version. So you can embed any any part of your website, or you could just share it as a link. It's a full page uh, chatbot. This is uh, probably our most popular uh, format. And then uh, what can Lamba be used for? So um, I guess uh, instead of uh, telling you, I will just kind of give you guys a few examples. All right. So here's a bot I built for this uh, session. And, um, and I would say that uh, most people use us for uh, lead capturing and lead qualification, uh, kind of like a marketing use case. So let's try that out. Here you can see that we can capture names and then email, which is uh, automatically uh, validated. If I don't uh, put an email format, they'll tell me uh, I don't understand. So I'm going to try this out. And I can also, uh, you know, sometimes uh, collecting one information at a time is too slow. So we can embed a little form inside the bot to collect multiple information all at once. So we have phone numbers, uh, date, which has a date picker, and then also just numbers. Um, yeah, that's the most common use case, uh, uh, but it's uh, a little more than that. Let me restart the bot. Yeah, you can, a lot of people actually uh, use us more uh, product recommendation, for example, if they have a, fairly complex uh, buying process. Uh, let's say if you are like a travel company, you try to recommend your user uh, which vacation package to take and you can maybe ask them, oh, what type of activity interests you? And if someone says, oh, I want, uh, I like nightlife, maybe we'll recommend something like a pub crawl in Tokyo, show them. And a slightly, even slightly more advanced use case is, for example, uh, you can uh, do a, if you're a business sales service and sometimes you need to allow people to put together many different, uh, uh, select different options and then give them the quote, you can use, put together a pricing calculator bot. So for example, uh, here I can select a standard plan and that will six month contract uh, I want to add on, doing the math here, and then give you a total number. 
and the user can even just pay within, within the bot. Uh, we have a Stripe integration available here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess uh, uh, I kind of want to pause here and see if anyone have any questions so far or any particular use case they're interested in. Yeah, hi Austin. I was just, uh, I mean, you might be covering it a bit later on, but I was just interested if, um, as well as a Stripe integration, you've got an Airtable integration for collecting this data into, into that database. Yeah, we have a Stripe integration available right now and Airtable, uh, we're actually working on it as we speak. And uh, if my estimation is right, well, hopefully we'll release it this month, but it's very, very soon. Yeah, it's actually, I'm personally in charge of that. So it, will, it should be released uh, pretty soon. I'll hold I will you get to that. that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it's number one priority now. Cool. And then, uh, and I guess I'll just show one last simple use case. Um, there actually a lot of people uh, you can also use this for like a simple survey or quiz. Uh, for example, let's... And yeah, and as you can see, these are like a fun user interaction you can use. Um, so uh, a lot of people think chatbot is just for support or like uh, uh, marketing. But uh, the way I would put it is that at least for Lembot, I cannot say for other chatbot solutions, is that Lembot is Think of it as the fastest way to automate any two-way user interaction uh, that have uh, uh, complex rules. Now uh, you obviously, uh, a lot, we talk about no code, we always try to be lean, right? Uh, a lot of times maybe building an actual app uh, uh, for a certain user action would be the best, but if you really wanted to uh, be lean and validate the idea, uh, you can try out Lemba first. Uh, we think of ourselves more as a uh, alternative to, to form builders, really, uh, like type form uh, uh, sort of things, uh, instead of really the, the drift and, and intercom that's more uh, geared toward uh, enterprise that have a, a human, like a customer or sales team that, that really prioritize that team communication. So uh, we're more of an automation tool that you can integrate into whatever you're building, whether it's a a uh, community, a website, or like a simple mobile app even. Uh, yeah, so that's what uh, Lemba can be used for. And then right now I want to uh, go into the product to show you guys a little bit of uh, how it works under the hood. Okay, so uh, you guys can see my screen uh, like full size, right? Or just like half size, just wanna make sure. Uh, full full size, yeah. yeah. Very great, great, cool. Because I have my notes open here. <laughs> All right, great. So, uh, so when you land in, this is uh, the Lemba dashboard, and then you can select field the chatbot here, and then we actually have uh, we support multiple channels, but website uh, web chatbot is our like number one priority. Uh, WhatsApp and Messenger we also support it, but there are better tools for this. For example, uh, many chats you guys have heard of. Um, and then, so web, web is really our, I guess we're, we're best at. And then it's actually what we recommend uh, because it's a channel you can control. Uh, unlike WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, you are always playing by uh, Facebook's role and then they're changing it almost every few, few months, uh, if not less. And then, yeah. And also, we also uh, uh, you know, support API, so you can integrate with uh, any channel you have uh, uh, if you can set up that integration. So when you uh, create a bot, we actually show you uh, many templates that you can use already. Uh, I'm not going to go through them, but so today we're actually going to start from uh, scratch. And uh, let me open it, one that I have already created for us. So when you open the new Chaba, oh, sorry, this is not uh, this one. Yeah, so this is the demo bar already created for us. So this is what our uh, builder looks like. Uh, 
And then just a quick uh, introduction here. Uh, this is a what we call the welcome message. And uh, what you see here on the top two, these are the message that the bot sends. And, and underneath it, you can see the options that user can select to reply to the bot. Uh, let me show you how it works uh, to the end user. So these two are the, the bot message and this is the button user can select. Um, yeah, so think of the welcome screen, uh, the welcome message is like a starting screen. Like once you start it, you start the whole conversation. And you can easily add an option for user here. Let's say, hey, there. And then you can create a flow by click on this dot and drag out. And then you can select what, uh, which block you would like to add. And in this case, I'm going to say, let's do a little experiment here. Hey there, hello. And then I'm gonna say, and then you can, uh, when you send a message, you can actually, it doesn't have to be a text message. As you can see, we can also insert, insert a, a image or a GIF. Uh, here, I'm gonna choose something. Ah, let's say hello. Here. Yeah, so we have all these GIF ready to use to make the interaction fun because we, uh, well, you know, it's always a good touch in your, within your product to, to have this little humor in it. And then let's see how that would work. Yeah, so immediately you can create a user flow in this way. Oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, so the, the, you can also set a default flow. Sometimes if you, if you don't really care which option to choose, choose, you just want to send them to the same flow. Uh, you can just create a, a flow for the default options and, and whatever user choose, he will go uh, toward that flow. Uh, and then let's see here. Yeah. And then uh, next, I'm going to talk about uh, some basic. So when you use a chatbot, uh, one of the imp uh, important thing is collect user input. So on the left side here is uh, what, uh, is uh, what we call like the, the, block, the block selector. Each of these is a little block and you can choose questions. And then we, can, we have all the question format available for you to choose. Uh, what you see here is the, uh, are the buttons but you can also ask for a user uh, name or like a free text input. And let's see what else we can ask for also, uh, we can create an autocomplete. Autocomplete is basically like a searchable option. Uh, you can set up and user can type to search it or you can also create a, uh, you can ask for a rating. I'm gonna put it all together so you guys can take a look how it, how, uh, how it looks like live. Let's say here. And then what do you think? So complete. So here's the asking for user's name. And this is a free text input. And then this is a searchable option because I didn't really set up any uh, options. So there's no uh, options to be find here. And then within each uh, option, you can actually uh, click on it. And then there's an editor here. You can do uh, perform more uh, advanced uh, configurations. Uh, for example, on the welcome button, you can add an image to the button 
let's say, or a emoji, for example. And then you can um, uh, add like a legal consent because a lot of time when you collect information, you do need to, you know, uh, get, uh, especially in Europe, uh, you have to uh, get user to agree that how you're going to use this information. So we do add, have this function in the welcome message. And then you can uh, decide how you want to display these options, whether you want them to be searchable, uh, multiple select, or uh, random order, or you can even uh, have them align vertically instead of, instead of uh, horizontally. So, oh. It's a bit messy because I didn't really think about how, we get, how I was going to apply these, but as you can see, you can do uh, many different things here. Uh, we have the emoji in the button and it's now vertically aligned and now you can even search it or select two at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so this is kind of the, the basic uh, of Lemba in terms of collecting user information. Uh, I kind of want to pause here and see if anyone have any question uh, so far. I wondered, um, Austin, like, what's the best approach to actually start designing your um, sort of your yeah your your flows or your your because um, because I saw you just kind of like dragging, dropping, and and connecting the dots. Um, mm -hmm. Is there like a way to go about like, um, especially when you're starting from a blank canvas? Is there an approach to take, or is it just like whatever you prefer? Um, yeah, I guess it depends on what your uh, the goal is. Um, to a lot of users, they use Lemba as kind of a, a lead capturing uh, automation. So uh, obviously they need to uh, write down, okay, what information do I actually need to collect from the user? And then before they arrive at the bot, what's the context? Are we sending them from a Google ad or are we, uh, sending them from a uh, website link and whatever. And then you start from there to design that uh, whole context. And then you lay down, uh, okay, what uh, information should I get, uh, gather? So, and then I can decide which uh, block should I use for, for the information I need. For example, if I need a user's number, then I will use the number block too. So user can provide it in the, the right format. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of the, the basic. And obviously you also have to consider uh, the, the, conver the conversion part of it. You don't want the flow to be too long uh, to say too many unnecessary things that user might likely drop off and that's not ideal. So you kind of want to balance like uh, you want to be fun, but you also want to make sure that user goes through all of it. Yeah, cool. That's great, thank you. Yeah. And then here, and I will get into a little more, slightly more advanced stuff. That's where things uh, really start to get fun. Because uh, uh, in a conversation, uh, a lot of times you are not, uh, your flow, you want to uh, split your flow, not just based on the previous answer, right? Uh, now, what do you do in this case? This is uh, where the important concept here is called variable, uh, is basically uh, you, it's a record of user's input. So for example, uh, in here you can see that whatever user answer for this question, we, are, we saved it as a variable called name. And then uh, within this conversation, we can recall this variable uh, to do a lot of different things. Um, for example, uh, let's say we ask user's name and in the next step, we can actually call it out and say, and this is what it'll look like. Oh, this, okay. Wait, I didn't really connect it. Uh, uh, let me try that again.
Let's say my name is Max. And then I can immediately recall it. Uh, the bot knows, uh, save these answers and you can reuse it within the conversation. Uh, and then the, usually the how it's used is that you can, based on user's input, you can uh, set up a conditional logic under power-ups. Uh, use case this uh, is, for example, let's say you have a e-commerce bot, uh, or maybe you are selling a service. Let's say you are an agency, for example. You want to ask user about their budget. Let's say, hey, what's uh, your budget? And then you can create a variable called budget here. And the format, because this is a number question, uh, we already decide the, the data format for you. In this case is a number. And then you can set a conditions here, say if budget is less than uh, 500, 500, for example, then we can say, Uh, no, see you later. So something like this. Say my budget is twenty dollars. So yeah. So this is one way to, uh, it's like slightly more advanced way to split your flow and uh, operate with your flow per se. And there are many other uh, options uh, you can choose here. Uh, for example, global keywords. Uh, let's say global keywords is basically, basically uh, it overrides everything. Uh, whenever in a conversation, a uh, user mentions specific keywords, uh, you can you can trigger them into a flow. For example, uh, let's say let's say a hundred days in this example. Uh, it's not uh, this this block is not connected to any part of the flow because it's kind of a kind of a global setting. It overrides everything, uh, but you can connect it to let's say. Let's say we set it up like this, right? And if we ask user to uh, a text, open text question, right? And then we connect to uh, a scale question. But if user answer uh, contains 100 days, they will actually be put into this flow. Uh, let's see if this will work. The date did not work actually. <laughs> I think I might made a typo. Uh, mm, all right, not sure. Containing space, special character, the key sensitive. Hmm. Yeah, not sure what I did around here, uh, but when it's done correctly, uh, it should override the setting and send you into uh, whatever you want it to be. Uh, and this is a even just a, like a basic example. Uh, in a more advanced setting, you can actually, uh, if you're really technical, you can actually use this to trigger uh, trigger a code in the backend. Let's say you uh, set up, uh, we have a, a block called code that basically lets you send native JavaScript code. Uh, so you can trigger something in the backend and send user to a particular part of the flow uh, without them knowing what's going on. So you can really do a lot of crazy things here. Uh, I guess uh, before I go into the, uh, the really, uh, I guess the really advanced stuff, I wanna show you guys a few more, uh, I guess kind of like the, the basic uh, things you can do. Uh, for example, you can, uh, 
if you have multiple bot and you want to send user between conversation, you can use jump to block. That basically you can select a different bot in your account uh, and then send user into that flow. So uh, this is very powerful when you have, uh, you know, multiple part of flow, then you want to, uh, you know, send user between those flow to, to have a seamless experience. And use, if you have a team, you can even use the note block here. And then just on the flow, you can say, hey, uh, remember not to delete this. Uh, for example, uh, is if you work in a team setting, uh, this is very helpful. Or maybe even just to remind yourself what a block is for. Uh, you can also use A-B test because sometimes, you know, like any form or any uh, uh, conversion driven uh, website, you want to make, make sure that, you know, whatever flow uh, you set actually doesn't cause uh, user drop off. Uh, and also sometimes there are some conversation that can only be handled by human. So you will want to use the human takeover block and you can assign to any agent within your uh, workspace. Uh, and then once they hit that uh, part of the flow, uh, you will, if you have the uh, browser notification enabled, you will receive a notification and then you can go to our uh, chat section, which is a, a human chat section, uh, like you see in other tools like Intercom or Drift. Uh, and you can talk to these user as human. Oh, and then I guess a quick cool thing is here you can do is that uh, in you know in most uh, chatbot tools you can pass a, a conversation from bot to human, but here we actually let you uh, launch a bot from the conversation. So let's say if you have helped them uh, to finish doing what they want, you can. Uh, you know, get them back to another bot flow so you don't have to continue talking to them. But it's completely up to your workflow. I guess it can be very helpful if you are operating a startup and you want to involve in this conversation. Uh, let's see. That was not... Cool. And then, uh, yeah, so I also want to share a little bit about the setting up here. So uh, like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, one of the key uh, value proposition is that uh, you can customize your bot uh, on, the, on the design of it. Uh, a lot of chatbot solution, they let you customize the color to be consistent with your brand, but that's it. Uh, here, we actually want to give you the full control uh, it comes with a lot of design templates. Uh, you can select this, or you can do it like this. Yeah, and then we'll continue to add more and more uh, design template here that's uh, ready to use. Um, here you can also customize pretty much uh, every element you see, the button, the, you know, how it's gonna look, the color, you, know, you can hide the header if you want, or you can hide the chat bubble if you want. Uh, you can have the background to be shown, to be an image, to be a video, or maybe if you embed it on your website, you can just hide your uh, background altogether and use your uh, website's background. And you can also pick the uh, avatar of your bot here and then you have some setting. If you uh, show the chatbot as a widget, then you will use uh, uh, icon here. You, will, you can set the icon here. Oh, and also if you want to do a little bit more advanced stuff, we also let you uh, add your custom uh, CSS or a custom JavaScript here. And under settings, uh, there are also many things you can set for the bot. Uh, you can, let's say, for example, revisit. Let's say if you have a bot and user might come back again, you can decide, you have a couple options here. You can let user choose whether they want to start over or continue, or you can set to always continue the conversation or always start a new conversation. 
that depends on uh, what your need is. And there are a lot of the custom system message within the bot, like the help text. Those are uh, everything you see can pretty much be customized. Uh, so for example, help text, choose the option. You can uh, make this whatever uh, you feel like. Buttons, question field here. And you can also set up tracking if you're using this for kind of like a lead generation purpose. Uh, and hidden field is also another very powerful feature. Uh, let's say you are sending users from uh, uh, a part of your app or part of your website, and then you already have the information, for example, their email, name, whatever. Uh, you can set it up here. You can attach it. Uh, when, you, when you send user to the bot, you can attach it in the uh, URL parameter, uh, kind of like a U UTM tracking code. And uh, as long as you set it up here, uh, our bot will automatically uh, recognize these parameters and use them and save them as variables. So pretty much as soon as user come in, you know who they are uh, and every, every information you have about them. Uh, and then one last thing is kind of like a more like a fun setting that you can uh, decide how fast your bot will, 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 will type. Uh, this is, this is pretty good uh, for user experience, actually, because it, it kind of helps uh, a user to read your message in a more uh, human uh, acceptable pace instead of you know, uh, reading through a long paragraph all at once. Uh, and you can play every, a lot of things here to make it uh, appear more human or less human if you want to. And then in the settings section, we provide many uh, setting options. Uh, you can make it like a live chat or embed or pop up or a full page. And it's pretty simple to set up. Uh, literally just uh, copy the code uh, and, uh, and then it will show up in your website. Let me show you an example. This is literally you just paste it. And then here you go. Uh, also, you can, uh, if you actually, if you just want to share the bot with someone easily, or if you just want to test in like a production environment, you can uh, go to share with the link and it will open up the link and you can share this link with uh, anybody. Uh, let's see, yeah. I guess uh, any question uh, regarding these uh, settings? We think we're all good. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. And I guess one cool thing uh, I forgot to mention is the analyze section. Um, uh, sometimes you want to see how your bot is performing, whether you can uh, optimize your flow a little bit, and this is where you would go. Uh, and you can also see a list of users here. Uh, this is something we will improve very soon. Uh, I guess just a spoiler, we kind of want to have a built-in, uh, a very lightweight Airtable, if you will, or a very lightweight CRM. So you can manage all the data you've collected within the bot, right within LearnBot. Uh, here you also you can see uh, like a funnel analytics is, uh, I don't know why it works like this today, but Maybe this bug. So, but uh, essentially, uh, this will tell you uh, which part of your flow uh, have the most user, uh, the um, user gone through the most, and which part uh, has a drop off. And this is also a section we will improve very soon. Cool. And here, I want to get back to I guess the integration because I know uh, probably everyone here today use a lot of other no-code tools. So I want to give a very quick uh, introduction there as well. So in the integration section, uh, we have Airtable. This is still in like private testing uh, just among ourselves. Uh, but the most common one, uh, which is the, I guess, uh, not as good as the Airtable, but a lot of people still use it, is the Google Sheet. 
uh, because uh, usually when you collect information from a user, you want to save in a database of some sort. Uh, Google Sheet act as a very lightweight uh, way of doing so. Here I'm going to share how to do that. Let's say in a Google Sheet, you can select your account. And then you can set up, perform different action. For example, you can insert a new role and you can set based on the, the column you have already set in uh, the Google Sheet. Here's the example. I have a few columns set already. And then you can select which column you want and then what's the, uh, the value you want the uh, Lembot to create in that sheet. And usually this will be a variable like username or user email, et cetera. Uh, a lot of people also use this uh, for Slack notification, uh, especially if you're working at a, a team, you wanna be notified when there's a, someone signs up and you can create a Slack notification. You can choose a, a channel you wanna send to and you can choose what the message would be. Uh, we actually use this one a lot internally to trigger a lot of uh, notifications or if there's any problem, our sales team or success team can um, follow up with the customer immediately uh, to understand if they need any help. Uh, and we also have Zapier, uh, obviously. Uh, and the way to use Zapier is actually uh, pretty simple. Uh, you just have to add a block here and you remember the block identifier, and, but you have to actually set up the, the actions uh, and trigger within Zapier, but it's pretty easy to do. And I'm pretty sure everyone here has used Zapier before. So I would not spend too much time on this. And then uh, dynamic data is another very interesting one. Um, let's say, uh, what if you, like, you actually want your bot to, to say something, to, to display some dynamic data not, uh, not stored within Lembot. Let's say you have an external database or a Airtable uh, and you want to uh, save all your product information in the Airtable, but display them in Lembot. And this is uh, how you would do it. You will uh, get those information in from either a native integration or we also have a webhook you can use. And once you pull them in uh, uh, and save them as an array uh, variable, uh, you can select that array and then display them. You can decide whether you want to display them as buttons, uh, picture choice, or uh, autocomplete. Uh, and I actually have an example here. I'm not sure if it will still work well because I built this a while ago, but uh, let's hope that's the case. This is a very uh, lightweight kind of like a delivery and uh, online order bot. So all the product information you see here is actually stored in Airtable. Let's say put burger. And I, I build a little uh, simple uh, add to cart function. And then even say checkout. I'll just say whatever. And then this part is the Stripe integration. As you can see here, uh, we have a native uh, Stripe integration that it takes a uh, credit card automatically. Um, and then also enter user email. And then, yeah, uh, right now we only support, uh, I'm pretty sure one-time payment, but in the future, we will also support uh, subscription and other more uh, payment type. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Max, I see we have uh, 10 minutes left. So I guess that's best. Maybe I can uh, leave the floor open to see uh, if anyone have any question or any particular feature they want to learn more about.
yeah that'd be great this has been been really really useful austin and yeah um if anyone's got any questions just uh just fire away thanks austin that's brilliant and you've opened my eyes quite a lot about what uh you know a, a, a bot can do where you know a chatbot is capable of i'll just uh, expect it to be a you know a customer service type of thing but uh, i love the um, ordering process you just showed there what uh, what happens to collected data now before um your integrations are are in place so if you just set up a flow and collected some information where, where would it go by default so these will go to your it will actually be saved in the bot in your we call it this uh user table as you can see here uh now everyone has, like uh just to give you an example these are all the variables we have uh, defined within this bot, and you can see uh, all the user, what they've chosen, and all that. Uh, right now, you can see it's a little bit slow, uh, and that's the main reason why we want to really improve this feature uh, to make it uh, work more like a, like a lightweight version of Airtable, so you can pretty much organize all your data here. Yeah. That's great. Thanks very much. So, um, in terms of the uh, the ordering thing, there is it possible to um, have sort of multiple items purchased? Do you sort of you know have a have a cart you know and then add and add to cart multiple items and then calculate the order completely afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was able to build it. But I, I gotta be honest, this uh, is a very light uh, version. I think there are better ways to do this, but this way it works, uh, but I think it, it's just not the, the best way. I'm sure someone can find a better way. I'll quickly introduce how I did it. Uh, I basically use a lot of, uh, a lot of variables and Airtable uh, as a way to build a backend. So here is the, uh, what do you say? Here is the where I display the, the pricing of the item. Uh, let's see, I built this a while ago, uh, so I need to remember how I did it. Uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, just a quick, uh, just a quick sharing that. So this what you see here is called a brick, um, because uh, if you build like a very long flow, sometimes it get really messy. So you can put a brick. It's kind of like a flow within a flow. Uh, to organize your, your bot. And this is uh, what Brick is. And uh, yeah, so I think in this case, I put all the uh, menu item within Airtable uh, because we didn't have an Airtable integration yet. We still don't have it, but it's coming soon. So I use a webhook to pull information, to gain for, uh, information from Airtable. Uh, and I've set up uh, kind of an advanced setup, but it's actually not that hard. Uh, if you are somewhat technical, you can figure it out. Yeah, so here, so we have the item uh, saved as a, a menu, I call it a array menu. And then I display them using the dynamic data block. Uh, and then, yeah. So that means you, if you updated some content in your Airtable, then the it would naturally be the most current version that landbot would be using on any time it runs yeah exactly exactly perfect well thank you very much i'll, I'll let someone else have a question but i appreciate your time today and that's uh, that's really for my eyes i appreciate it thank you very much yeah happy to help um yeah just feel free to come off mute if uh, anyone's got any other questions Um, I I was going to ask one actually, Austin, um, around uh, as I'll be integrating this into um, my beginners course. I just wondered if there's any best practice around configuring quizzes. Uh, I don't know if uh, yeah, if there's anything around that that's that's good to know before I, I dive into that. Yeah, quizzes is actually a very common use case. We actually see a lot of uh, online courses and uh, even just regular schools uh, using it. Uh, so quizzes, uh, you will probably be using a lot of uh, conditional logic uh, because you, I bet you will be asking a lot of questions and you want to mm -hmm. validate if user's answer is correct. 
uh, the very easiest way is obviously uh, providing uh, buttons, uh, just kind of like a multiple choice question. Uh, how you can set up different uh, options here. Um, yeah. But if you want to be more advanced, you can use the uh, conditional logic. Uh, and then really, you know, you really want to get a specific answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, that has to be correct. Otherwise, you know, it, it's, it's wrong. Right. And then you can, yeah. And then every time user get a uh, question right, let's say you want to calculate a score, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a block called set variable. Okay. And you can say score. And you can say this is a number. Um, okay. And then you can um, score plus one. Okay. Yeah. 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 A lot of uh, you know people marketer use this to calculate least score as well. Uh, whatever you user uh, answers, you add a score or deduct a score depending on it. Um, and then if you really want to be really really advanced. Um, which hope not in your online course, but if you really want to uh, make things uh, very advanced, we have another uh, block called formulas. You yeah. can perform very advanced uh, calculation here, uh, not just with math, but also with the data itself. You can uh, you know, put together multiple string uh, as array or split the array as string uh, or use regex uh, to validate a user answer. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, then put the result of that formula into a, a variable or update a variable with the result of a formula? Yeah, totally. Well, that that makes it amazingly powerful. That's that's pretty open ended. There, that's great. It is. It is. Sometimes we get uh, use case from users that uh, we we you know we we were also surprised about. <laughs> yeah, that that really does. How does that compare to other chatbots? Because yeah, you know, that it seems extremely comprehensive. Um, other chatbot, I guess. Uh, so when a lot of people say uh, chatbot, uh, actually the first two names that come up is Intercom and Drift. Uh, however, uh, they brand themselves as a chatbot solution, and they do have chatbot. But the the reality is they're more of a live chat solution that have salespeople talk to you. If you actually look under the hood, the way they uh, let you build Chaba is quite line linear. Um, right now, I think they have like a visual flow builder like ours, but uh, I think the, the experience of uh, the building experience is still very different. Uh, and I would say this is probably uh, our number one differentiator is that we want to make the, the building experience uh, super good. Uh, and not just for chatbot, for any automation tool uh, that has this uh, flow building experience, uh, I guess. I would say that we're probably one of the best, uh, just to show you a few cool things. Uh, not every flow builder lets you do these and then move everything. Uh, you can build and let you select and move things around uh, this naturally. So we really uh, try to improve this experience uh, to make the building kind of fun. I, I think you nailed the intuitive side of things because I've followed everything you've said and you know it seems like you're not far away from you know at the next step you know adding something or you know setting setting something it seems like the intuitive side of things is something you've thought about a lot and um congratulations because i think you've you've made something brilliant here yeah thanks um on that on that note um let's uh yeah let, let's let's wrap up uh, uh, yeah i've i've yeah i kind of lost for words a bit um just just because i'm yeah excited by the, the the sort of capabilities um but is there any final words that you'd like to share, Austin, before we before we close this up? Uh, 
No, uh, actually, I guess, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, you know I'm, I'm not a marketing guy, but I always try to, you know, be an evangelist of our product. So feel free to, um, I guess the best way, probably Twitter. Um, let's see if I can, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, or maybe you can, uh, Max can share it. Uh, yeah. My Twitter handle, feel free to send me a DM. Uh, happy to show you uh, answer specific questions you have or uh, any, some tricks. Uh, and maybe uh, I'll, I'll share this with you later, Max. Uh, sure. I guess it's probably the, the best example uh, yeah. that's built within Lemba. Yeah. It's something we, we used for our product hot launch uh, last year. Uh, this is a really fun game. Uh, it's built in uh, entirely within Lambot and then uh, with some some custom uh, code, but mostly like very easy CSS and JavaScript and a few other tools. This is a, uh, just to show you how powerful uh, our, uh, our product can be if you have the creativity uh, to put everything together. Uh, so everything you see here is Lambot, the transition, uh, the background, uh, if you know some CSS uh, with our flow builder is it very easy to do. Uh, I will not show the whole thing because it's quite long, but uh, uh, Max, I'll share this link with you. So maybe you can share with everybody. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, that would, um, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll definitely share it. It's, it um, yeah, I think um, <laughs> that, that, that will blow more people's minds um so oh, yeah um but yeah thanks so much again austin and thanks everyone for, for coming um and uh yeah catch you all on slack or um or or elsewhere in the uh no code sphere so uh, yeah see you guys and, and and again thanks so much for your time thanks austin. Right. Thanks, austin. yeah thank you so much all right see you later